Jason Malakis. You might remember me from the um, meeting, meeting we held for the zoning last year. Today we're here to talk about protected intersections. Um, I'm going to kind of go through a brief understanding of what that is. But first I want to introduce who we have here today. We have three departments here for you. We have planning with the Grove 80. We have public works with Norm Masculinas and Joseph Dyke. And we have our planning and policy manager for DOT, Jessica Day. So tonight, first let's kind of recap where we are. As you know, in December, the zoning for the Japantown project was approved. So that means the land is entitled. What we're working on now is phase two, which would be the PD permit. <coughs> but we're not going to discuss the PD permit tonight. Tonight is just for protected intersections. We're going to have a second meeting at the end of March to go over the details of the project. The applicant will have um, renderings of where they come in their design. We'll get some uh, feedback from you guys. But tonight will be just about protected intersections. If you remember at the last meeting, you might have gotten that long uh, paper, and it had options of ways that the project mitigation will pay and um, kind of results in some fees, and those fees can be put toward public improvements. And all those are listed on that sheet. And if you did come last time, we asked you to think about what would be some public improvements you'd like to see in your neighborhood, and we asked you to think about it. So when we came back tonight, you can, um, we're gonna do a little activity where we can kind of gauge um, how you would like to see those funds spent. Um, when we reconvene, we're going to go over where the majority of people kind of thought the money would be best spent. And we're going to have Jessica kind of explain the purpose of this policy, the purpose of these fees, the purpose of these improvements. And then we'll let you all um, have at that map with some sticky dots. But we're going to let Jessica talk first. All right. Any questions about the agenda or anything before we get? Alright. Yeah. Do you have the clarification on what protected intersection? Absolutely. Good segue. Yes. This doesn't seem to match what we said in the mail. What we said in the mail was for development permit allow construction of residential units. Right, that's the project that this was entitled. And then I believe under there it says meeting purpose. Is there okay. a meeting purpose on there? So yeah, it just describes the project and then you have a meeting purpose. So we apologize for um, any confusion and so I'm exactly going to start where Victoria um, left off, which is what is, what is a protected intersection? Uh, it's a term that's specific to San Jose. Um, what's the purpose of that policy? How does the policy work? And then, you know, how we're here to get your feedback into what the policy should do with respect to this project. Um, so the protected intersection policy was established uh, about a decade ago, in 2005. And the purpose of the policy is to say, you know, we know that um, new development and even changes in public roadways, they cause traffic shifts um, in, our, in our cities. And the typical way that that's looked at is that you say, okay, there's going to be new development and there's going to be this new traffic. This traffic um, will need two more turn lanes or you know, a, a widening of a roadway or something like that. And the city in 2005 looked at that and said, well, that's antithetical to the way that we are approaching development in the city. We are trying to um, get more people out of their cars. We're trying not to widen, widen roadways in ways that make it difficult to get around your own neighborhood, to walk and bike and drive safely. And so what we're gonna do instead is in cases where we feel like an intersection has been built out to the right size. Um, you know, we have the right amount of auto capacity, and if we add a little more capacity, it would be at the detriment of people getting around in the city. In those cases, we were going to designate those intersections protected. Um, and so instead of saying, okay, development, add another right turn lane, widen that intersection, make it larger and cross, et cetera, um, we're gonna calculate a, a fee, essentially, based on uh, the amount of, of people that you're bringing into this. And then we're gonna use that, those funds, and that, um, uh, work 
to instead improve the overall transportation system for all types of users. Uh, we're going to identify those transportation improvements in conjunction with the community, with the developer, and with the city. And then we're going to condition the development to make those improvements or contribute to those improvements um, instead of you know, the business as usual way that this is done. Questions about that, the way that the policy and purpose was, was set up? That makes sense. So that, that's essentially um, what it means. The protective intersection policy, uh, how it works, I alluded to it. It's a little bit confusing. We often, even in the city, uh, misspeak when we talk about it. I, I said, you know, you calculate it. So you look at the amount of traffic that any development is expected to generate, and you look at the traffic it's expected to put through these protected intersections. And then you calculate what the development sort of owes. But the goal for us as the city is not to collect money, or not exclusively to collect money. And that's for, the goal instead is to have the development actually do the improvements while they're doing the development. And that's for two reasons. Um, one is to make sure it's timely, that you're seeing the improvement, the, the multimodal system improvement at the same time that you're seeing the development. And then the second is because it can often be more cost effective for the, develop, the developer to do the improvements rather than it going through the city. Um, in some cases, it's a larger project that the community, the developer, and the city feel is the right way to go. And in those cases, we would instead be looking at the contribution, um, just because, you know, for example, one project that we'll talk about that came up in the recent meeting for the Cannery Park project at the corner of 10th and Taylor. Uh, for that project, the overwhelming community desire uh, was that some of the, the um, policy be used to finish the, or to do the couple conversion of 10th and 11th. That's long been discussed. Um, for that type of project, any particular development does not owe the type of money or you know, the, their, their fees is not to the extent that would do that project. So we would rather be looking at potentially taking the contribution, matching it with grant funds, matching it with other city resources or even other projects and trying to build enough um, to the point where we could do a project at that scale. However, if we're looking at bowl valves that are near the project, if we're looking at enhanced crosswalks, if we're looking at other things, we would want the developer to actually do that to satisfy this requirement. Questions about that? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, when they do that project, Assuming, of course, that the soil is contaminated. When they go in to clean up the contaminated soil, what will be the truck route? How will they get out? Will the, 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 the dust be flying in there? Will the contaminated soil be flying around to all the local residents? Or, you know. Right. And is this a concern that you're asking about for yeah. the overall Port Fair project or for right, the. Right, because they'll be taking contaminated soil out of that. Out of, out of the Fort Drive project. So I think that probably that's a good question for because that's not necessarily associated with like a crosswalk improvement type of thing or the couple conversion. That's the project, right? So I think that there are very specific rules associated with it, but I'm an expert in it. Um, that sounds like a follow-up question yeah. that can do. Um, so we use car since she's the project manager. Um, I recommend grabbing her card. Email us that question tomorrow or tonight. Um, so we can look into it and find out. But generally, there's a practice. If there's contaminated soil, when they come in for the PE permit, they'll be conditioned to handle it a certain way. Citywide, if you have contaminated soil, there's been a soil report that says yes or no. And if you do, you have to remove the dirt in this manner in a way that doesn't pollute the air. And if there's digging, you have to make sure it doesn't create dust. So I don't think at this time that there was a condition in the zoning and publicly a condition in the PD permit to obey any kind of soil issues when they're removing it from the site. So we can check the environmental yeah. documents. Mm -hmm. so you want to email me. That might be a yeah. good follow-up for the next few yeah. yeah. And we can also discuss it. 
Yeah. Good question. Anybody else? Yes, Victoria. I need a point of clarification as we move forward. About two years ago, the city gave to the neighborhoods a grid, and I'm sorry I didn't bring it with me. I barely got to some work. Anyway, um, they gave us a nice grid about the four develop I think four developments in this area. It's the cannery and then the two over there off of 10th Street, and I think uh, the courtyard is on there. And it showed traffic mitigation monies that these developments, kind of an estimate number, and it came to about a mil point five or something like this. And I, what I'm hoping is these are not the monies that you're speaking of. Because we were told that the protected intersection was a different issue and a different set of money and that the other monies that were given by the developers for traffic mitigation to the neighborhoods was a separate property of money. And for some odd reason, I'm getting a really uh, bad vibe that we're talking about the same pots of money. Let us, let us look into that because, um, let's, Clarify that, and was Laura Wells part of the week? Victoria and I talked before this, but I'll start with her if that's a good point person. I can't her. remember who gave us this, yeah. but we had it, okay. and we've seen it as a neighborhood. Okay. We've seen it to the point where we've done a traffic study in the Japan Town Neighborhood Association and came up with the kinds of things that neighbors see in terms of making it a safe, walkable neighborhood. Well, that, that's great, and that is, um, we'll figure out whether these are different or the same pots of money. Um, what? So, what I, can, what I can say is that the, there is a, there's the Jackson Taylor specific plan, yep. so the Jackson Taylor <laughs> yep. community, but there's certain designated improvements that need to happen, kind of they're specified for the project frontages. So this isn't going to be, so that the improvements that are happening along the frontage, the, wider sidewalks, the potential like a bulb out of their, along their frontage, um, that kind of stuff is their their responsibility is because they're intensifying their site for their for their frontage improvements. Yeah. The policy not, areas that we're talking about right now is protected intersection right. and then there's the open 101 right. traffic I'm not right. confused about what's being presented mm -hmm. and what's being proposed. What I'm confused about is the developers' contributions the traffic mitigation and traffic calming to the neighbors. So the, in the, only neighborhood. the only policies that are, that are in place that are these are this developer is okay. subject to is the protected intersection, which is basically the transportation traffic calming. What we're going to talk about some of these, these mm -hmm. items are the traffic calming, um, potentially pedestrian enhancements, um, other kind of improvements that can happen, as well as the other one is just to open 101 traffic impact. Exactly. But, the, the, but I, I don't, again, okay, we can follow up, but yeah. based on what you're saying, they might have looked at all the different developments, and they might have looked at how much potential trips they would be uh, sending yeah. through these protected intersections, and coming up with a dollar amount at the time of what those potential protected intersection improvements yeah. would be in terms of if they all came in at the same time for that, for that kind of money. I but understand. I don't think it would be a separate thing. So I think what we're talking about right now is the protected intersection that potentially might be the same thing that, that might have been highlighted that. I'm not, like I said, I'm not confused about your presentation, and I'm not confused about protected intersections. What I'm confused about is if there's only one pocket of money that the city is requiring health developers to put forth in a pot, and what I'm now hearing is there's a possibility that your project might you serve and take that money to meet your protected intersection mitigation project. I think which it which would be helpful if A, we had the paper you're talking about, so you can email it to me yeah. or, yeah. or Jennifer yeah. Tab because yeah. it, I know there's a lot of meetings out here, and I know EOD has meetings, yeah. I know different so people have different meetings, meetings so I, I, can't, I don't think we can get an answer to what you want without knowing the piece of paper that you have. So if you can email that to us, we can see if what that's showing oh, no, is related. The question is a real 
Good question. But it's not clear to me because what you're describing is exactly what we're describing here. So if you're mentioning a different pot of money that is from another something, I need to know what that something is, and then we can see what the confusion is as to why you think it's the same thing. Okay. Unless, yeah. unless you're talking about an existing contributions that other projects have paid. No, all developers are required to give to the city. Right. And I'm certain, because you are city employees, it would be very easy for you to pick up the phone, ask somebody, when the developers develop these monies that are earmarked for traffic mitigation, is there only one pot? That's all I'm asking. Because if it's the same pot that we're going to draw from, then I'm, as a neighborhood, we have to rethink our participation today. Because we have put together a survey to look at the impact that these developments have on the surrounding neighborhoods. So that's all we're asking. We will definitely we'll take a look at the paper, we'll pick up the phone, we'll answer this question. But I think you should operate for tonight on the theory that if traffic calming is your priority, you list traffic calming as your priority. And you give us particular information you know, that you have so far, and if there's follow-up information, we will absolutely take it and take it into consideration. Um, but that you share, you know, this is traffic calming, it's an issue here, we want to see this type of improvement, because that is an absolutely eligible use of the protected intersection policy. Because I think if you look at the things that you say completed development improvement, yep. those were initiated by the neighborhood. Those were not initiated by the city. Yeah. Those were initiated, and you, you, in working with the neighborhood, are able to call completed projects. Because the neighborhood said, in order to keep our neighborhood safe and pedestrian friendly, these are the kinds of things we need in order to slow the traffic down that cut through our neighborhood. Yeah. So. Perfect segue. If there are other questions, let me know or, or stop me midstream. Because let's turn to um, the map. Um, I hope I hope everybody has some. Of course, there was having some issues. That's much more logical than some of what um, was coming out. But basically, there are there are three types of improvements and one other color on the map. So I'm going to start with the other color, which is the the red dots with the PI. Those, just for your reference, are the protected intersections in this vicinity. So that's what we're talking about, the places that we can measure, we expect trips to go through, we're not gonna blow up these intersections, instead we're gonna do other stuff. Um, then there are three types of improvements. The green, one through nine, those are improvements that were identified working with you starting in 2000, well actually probably starting before, but solidified in 2007, came out of the various plans that this neighborhood has worked on for a long time. These were things that were desired. Some of them, to Victoria's point, used to be on this list and have been completed in uh, one fashion or another working with the neighborhood and the uh, three offices, et cetera. Um, so that, that's the green, and we can go through them one by one, but just so you're aware. Items one through five, those are other um, improvements that since 2007 have been suggested that we consider as part of potential uses of the protected intersection policy. Um, and you are also welcome, as you think about this tonight, to put something that hasn't been identified before on the on the map and on the list. Yeah. Um, sorry, I just wanted to clarify this for a little bit. Please. Um, the protections, intersections are intersections that aren't going to be touched by improvements. Correct. Okay. Where where we said we don't we don't want to widen this roadway. Okay. We don't want to. We want it said we might um you know if you say we need to enhance crosswalk at that intersection. I mean we could do things at them, but we're not going to accommodate greater auto traffic at them. Okay, sorry, I just was thinking. It's a good question. You know, like protected like the center. I didn't think that's right, sorry. Exactly. There's this term in the bike world of protected intersections, and that's not what we're talking about either, right? Green yeah. bike boxes, et cetera. Yes. Can you define install gateway in the neighborhood? What's a gate? 
Yeah, so different, um, you can think about in, in this own area, the Hensley Historic District, or the Hensley District at, I want to say it's Julian and Third. Yeah, that mine. The mine, yes. Yep, something that is a marker that serves sort of to, to you know, say you're entering a community, you're entering a place. Oh, okay. That's, that's a gateway. Uh, San Pedro Square, the, the, the big gates there. That's another um, gateway feature. Good question. It's not a traffic issue, it's a... No, no. It's a decoration. It's like, uh, yeah, like an identification sign for the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay, got it. I think some, one of the reasons why I'm asking the question that I'm asking is I was a part of that Jackson Taylor. I've been in the neighborhood that long. And I guess one of the reasons when I think about when I think about traffic mitigation and traffic calming in an area like this Japan, greater Japan Town area, Northside, St. James, Hensley, um, oh gosh, Vendome, uh, who's the Burton people? The people over there at Burton? Hyde Park. Hyde Park, mm -hmm. Northside. When I think about our community, what you're looking at is residential community. And one of the things that we understand, we might not like it, but we understand, we understand that all of these developers bring in more housing, more farms. We understand that it's not going to go away. But what we want is we want to be a part of a process where the monies are used to make our streets pedestrian friendly so we can all get out and do the things that you're talking about, like walk and ride our bike. Gateways aren't going to add to pedestrian friendly. What I'm hearing from 3rd Street is they need more street lights for the light of the streets. So I take a look at some of this and I'm thinking, whose idea is this? Some of this is beautifully <coughs> enhancing our neighborhood. That would be wonderful. And if the city would like to use their coffers to do that, that would be great. But this traffic money really needs to be spent to slow it down so that when we cross the street to move across town to get where we need to get, we're not going to get run over. Because we have horrible pedestrian killings in, in District 3. And so when I look at some of this, I think some of this is, is not what the neighborhood want. We don't want a, a Coyote Creek Trail to 101 to Barn. The city and BART can develop that and put the money into that. But when these developers come into our community and become a community partner, we want to ensure that those people who are coming from Berkeley who are going to walk to Japantown don't get run over in the process. And so that these younger families who are moving in feel safe and there's lights in our neighborhoods to make it pedestrian friendly. So I look at this and I wonder, where were we when you did this? Because we didn't ask for gateways. Well, so, so part of that was some brainstorming that had occurred at some point. And so part of tonight is we want to find out, we want to, because I'm a resident of the neighborhood. I, as personally, I completely agree with you. I've got three kids. I hate the intersection of 7th and Jackson, but that's me. <laughs> So, no. so we want we want to yeah. get this prioritized exactly information exactly. back, so we can go to the rest of the DOT folks and say, hey, no one wants your identification sign. We need the sidewalks fixed. And you know, there were there were, like people, there were community folks who spent their time <coughs> and their energies in you know 2007, 2009. Some of these. We want to acknowledge that and make sure that that's not just you know pushed aside. But it's 2016. And the projects are happening now, and we're entirely here to understand your current priorities. We we have a traffic server with pie charts, and Mr. David Fran came to our neighborhood association yeah. meeting, and he's seen them. Right. And these are response from our neighbors from first to ninth, and from younger to empire. And we're going to invite you. Pass them on to me. I can pass them on to Jessica. And also, there's other voices in this audience. So while I would I acknowledge and speak for many, maybe somebody who has a come to your meeting does want an archway and the point of tonight is one vote there and they're allowed to place their dot wherever they want on this map in conjunction with things that you like 
David will share those with me. Again, I will pass them on to Jessica and will become part of the broader conversation. But we're not here to dismiss anybody's idea this evening. We're here, it's a public forum to do a democratic process, put some stickers on the wall, as democratic as that could be tonight. So while I understand the many people you work with may not want the gateway, that's why we have a voting system tonight. And also, as Jessica said, that list came from somewhere, maybe not your meeting, but it came from somewhere, and we'd like to acknowledge it this evening in conjunction with the things you've submitted to data. Yeah, Roy. I'm just wondering, the numbers here, is that, is that a priority order or just a list? Of Good question. Okay. Just an identification. Okay. Yep. And so the, the numbers here, they correspond with the numbers on the back side, just for cross-reference. Yeah. So the four last question. Yes. Your meetings in 2007 were public record. Could you share with us when they occurred and who attended? We can sure look for that. Okay. I apologize. I have been with the great. city for less than since 2007, but I will touch base with Laura. And you, can, you can actually go to the, the city's clerk's office and submit yeah. a, a PRA, a public uh, request records act. Or, sorry, okay. PRA request, sorry, public yeah. records act request. And, and, we, and, we, they'll, and they'll cycle through all the city departments, including council offices, yeah. to, to grab the records. I mean, we, we can look for it too first, okay. and then if it. If we, Thank yeah. you. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And in the division called improvements under consideration, yeah. what's this about the railroad? I mean, what are you going to do with the railroad? Which number? So number four, I believe, where it says improve railroad crossings. So at um, 7th and Jackson and 8th and Taylor, roughly, is where the railroad cuts through near uh, near the proposed project, near the courtyard project. And um, many people have noticed, I admit, I also shop at the Japan Head Park Market of the days. Um, many have noticed that it's, a, it's difficult to cross. It's dangerous, especially on a bike, in a wheelchair, with a stroller, anything with wheels. It's, it's not a good crossing um, of those railroad tracks. Uh, it's very curved, the intersection is very large. Um, so, um, <coughs> This item is one that I think there's, a, you know, if there's interest um, from you all and there's interest from the developer, there's definitely interest from the city in seeing that improve. It may be pretty difficult with um, the railroad having jurisdiction over that, but you know we would do our best to um, work on that if that's you know the, a priority. Yes. The information that you're receiving tonight. Do you have to take it to city council and they approve all this stuff? Um, when the PD permit goes to council, it will have whatever the um, decisions are about what the development will provide per this policy. But it's not going separately as a standalone item to council. You mean the city council is the one to make all the decisions about what happened in the city as a whole? And you, that they do what they want to do. <coughs> so it's this plan development mm -hmm. permit is actually decided on at a director's hearing, not city council. <coughs> um, and uh, so it's a different level of hearing. Um, but the, the conditions, the public works, um, the public works conditions that are incorporated into the development permit are all going to be publicly available for comment. Um, a week ahead of time, um, but even up until then, anybody in the public is welcome to contact city staff to find out. Hey, what are you, what are you guys thinking about? What did you know? Did you guys decide anything? Like so, it's, we don't want it to be an opaque process. We yeah, but, but you do. You do. What happened is, and what you should do is go to the city council because you're just making a presentation. But when it all comes down, they got to go through the process. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to the city council, it makes the bound to city. I'm not It's not going to council. So we, have, we have different levels of public hearings in San Jose. So council did decide on the zoning, which was the land use with the, the setback <coughs> and the height and the number of stories and the number of residential units. So that land use, <coughs> we refer to as land use, was approved by city council. But now we have a project in front of us. 
and the project itself is decided upon initially by not a politician who's decided. You do have your council representative <laughs> here, so any issues, you know, he's this who are you? My, my name is David Chair, and I'm with Councilmember Perales' office. Who is your council member? In this area? Yes. Jonathan yes. Jonathan. 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 Well, it's nice to meet you now. <laughs> you should have met me. In the rest of the land, me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk after, and then we can have a conversation offline about it. Okay. One more question, and then we can get to the Jessica, one last question. The deceiving part of this gentleman here clarified it. This paper came out. This paper came out as if we were going to talk about opioids. And what it what it's beginning to sound like, and, and no one is being straightforward about it. We're just being told that this was all set up, and somebody somebody had meetings. Some, someone came up with these prioritizations about how this <coughs> uh, intersection mitigation money are to be spent by the developer. So I'm going to back up and clarify one more time again. Are we talking specifically about the related William and Dane's courtyard development at six? And are we talking about the pocket of money that that developer has to pay to the city of San Jose to mitigate and mitigate the traffic due to the large amounts of cars that are going to be associated with that development? Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Okay. With one caveat, which is that it's it's hopefully not a fee. Hopefully, it's that they do the things that you decide. It's, you know, a, it's a fee. I don't want to kid anybody. It's a development fee. It's that's what we're told. It's a requirement yeah. for, for it's that. It's a requirement Absolutely. of the developers. Yep. <laughs> Related to their traffic. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, so we are passing out dots because we do want to see, you know, from everybody who took time out of their busy schedule to come this evening, we want to see what types of projects, whether they are on this list or not, what types of projects we want. And we want to see that visually by placing your dots on the map. Um, I'll, I'll wait for this moment so that and then if you have anything else that you'd like to articulate in writing, we would like to see that as well. We'd like to order to flip this over and so that we can record not only the dots, but if there are things that you just you can't explain in a dot, you can't explain on the map, we want to record those as well so that we understand them and we can take them into account after this. Um, you have four dots, and, and so you have four votes. We would like to see um, your top priority in red sliding to your the your fourth. I wrote it down too because I can never remember. Exactly. Else. Highest priority. Highest next. priority is red. No. Green is the next highest priority. Mm -hmm. Yellow is medium, and blue is low. Go to put the dots on the writing. We would. So, Where do you want the dots? There's not an infinite amount of space on here. Yeah. So one option would be to put it yeah. Yeah. next to the item store and ask me to grab it. Um, like so, when we did this for the um, the 10th and Taylor Cannery project, um, a lot of people at that community meeting were interested more in the decoupling of 11th, 10th and 11th. So we had a bunch of cities kind of going up and down 10th and 11th. So, um, and, and then if you have a project that's not on the list yet, please put it roughly where the location of the, you know, what you want to see is on the map, and please also write it on, on the paper. Yes, so please scroll on. Make sure we understand. Are there, I saw a hand right here. I'm, just, I'm a little bit confused. I'm here that you want us to take dots, put them on a the map that the city staff brainstormed with, with um, and put down as priorities. Is that what I'm hearing? I, I think there's a lot. Would it have been more in line with um, communication if this was sent out to these people first so we could review it rather than do something 
respect to the entire community. So, thank you. One, one caveat to, to make is that, you know, it says on the, the back of the sheet, in 2007, this did go to, go to council, um, the city council adopted a Jackson Taylor Community Improvement Zone Multimodal Transportation Inventory. I was not involved with that process, but that was a compilation of um, information and community input based on these plans for this neighborhood and community workshops held at that time. Some of those projects are listed here. Some of those projects were completed since that time. So, I, you know, it's a little bit more than staff sat around and brainstorm. It's, it's definitely that there, you know, historically there were identified needs they haven't been moved on because you know projects haven't come forward so in this time. So these priorities are nine years old. So these priorities are old. These priorities are nine years old, and they were articulated with by people who, like many of you, have been in the neighborhood for a long time. So I, you know, it's a it's a balancing act. We want to understand what your current priorities are, and we're not going to discount the prior. You know, we're not going to get rid of priorities that were articulated before, but they may not be top priorities now. And that's what we want to understand tonight. But we want so if much, somebody comes up with a new issue or a new yeah. idea, is that will be heard. That will absolutely be heard. And that's why we want it on the map with the sticky notes and we want it recorded as well so we make sure we fully understand it and follow up with it. And that's that honestly is what happened um, at the the Karen Park meeting over the summer is that because of this scope of the project, the couplets, that was not on the list for them at the time. And they all said, there's a huge priority for us that's not on this list. And they prioritized that. And we have a study out by some um, profit consultants to look at what it would take to do that as a result of what we heard. I have a question. You, you're all talking about traffic tonight. Does the word parking involve traffic? It's not a moving vehicle, but it had to get there somehow. But yes. now, where do you put it when it gets there? Are we going to talk about that, or is that not tonight? The, the zoning that was approved by council back in December included the amount of parking that had to be provided on the project site itself for both the future residences and the businesses and the CCA. So that the amount of parking that has to be provided has already been decided on. Does that answer your question? I, I, we're not going to discuss that tonight because no. it's a done deal. That was already approved by council. The city council already approved. The issue of the reverend's question about the city council, it sounds like they're not going to debate whether you should do number two or number five. The staff decides that they just approve the whole deal and they don't, right? Right. Yeah. The, they director, don't. the director the of public director. works approves it. Yeah. And then the city council does what he has recommended or doesn't. The, city, the city council doesn't hear that. Exactly. They don't get into detail. Was that a negative or positive on that last? Uh, doesn't. Does, does not. not. Correct. Okay. So that's why, that's why we want as much community feedback as possible. And we, we do have some other people in right here. So does the Jackson Taylor Community Improvement Zone, what are the boundaries for that? Because that picture takes in, you know, several neighborhoods all around. I'm from Hensley. I mean, Horace Mann is impacted by this. So are there specific boundaries or are we taking that picture right there as the zone? That picture as the zone for your input tonight. Absolutely. Yep. Just a question that might help me and maybe others understand a little bit. Uh, in my impression, I don't know if this is right, but in the immediate vicinity, it seems like Taylor has the most traffic by far, at least in my experience. Uh, and I don't, I, I'm struggling to figure out how any of these projects help with that. So if it's about helping with traffic, what would be a few of your It's not to improve vehicular traffic. It's to improve um, sidewalks, walkability, bike lanes, things like that. So cars have been prioritized for so long, 
We're now saying we're not going to prioritize the vehicles, we're going to prioritize everybody else. Got it. So Thank that's what we're going to do. Yeah. 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 Um, so, but we want, like, we want that survey that yeah. we have for them. We want that. And because Very I awesome. live close to the project, um, like, this is my neighborhood. I've been here for 13 years. Like, I, uh, like, yeah, I'm keeping an eye out. Because if, if, if for some reason DOT said, yeah, we've got all this information about what the neighborhood wants, but we're really going to focus on that trail connection, I'm not going to be happy. And so, like, I, I, I don't, I really, really hope that no one feels like this is going to be opaque. Um, that there are staff who are like emotionally invested in what happens because we live here too with our kids. So, so I am, I'm in this with you. Like, I want this to work the right way. And but like, but I, I know that what my say is is not any more important than anyone else. So that's why we want as much information as possible so that we basically get the developer to get. We want the biggest bang for the buck. Yep. Start with the dots. Oh yeah. We're so out of time. really okay. fast to answer your question, we're gonna the man in the picture. There's a website that we're gonna post this. That with the black the agenda. agenda or agenda. Sorry. We're gonna have a web this on the Japan town. The developer. You. <laughs> we have a website where we're gonna put the map. Yeah, you asked that question about wanting to have more time to be informed, so I'm addressing you because I'm asking the developer to put a map online so where you can review the map more. Well, if you don't want the help, then I don't need to give it, but I'm trying to extend a resource to you. I'm going to, for everybody in the room, I'm going to put a map online. If you want to review that material more before you place your dot, that's going to be on there, and it'll have a link to my email. You can email me. Um, once you have time to maybe go over this more if you don't feel comfortable putting a dot tonight. So let's start with the dots. No more questions so we can keep moving because the meeting's over at 7.30 so we can reconvene. Go ahead and use your dot. Feel free to ask the questions throughout when I have any I'm going to ask. Yes. Yes.